Howdy. So the purpose of this video here is to demonstrate how to use the Poisson distribution formula. It's not a requirement for achieved, and um, but certainly if you're going for merit or excellence, you, you need to be able to use it. At achieved level, it's sufficient just to use uh, the graphics calculator functions, PPD or PCD, and um, to see some really good demonstrations of how to do the questions on this page, um, watch Mr. Howard's videos. So this video has a different purpose. It's to go through how to use the formula. Here we go. So if you go to your formula sheet, please, and here is the pass on distribution section, and we're going to focus on this uh, formula right here, which looks like a nasty piece of work, but we're going to learn how to use it. So, a few things that we need to look at for a start in that formula, because it looks like another language, doesn't it? So, firstly, if we go through it, a reminder, what's this thing here? Well, that's lambda, which is a Greek letter, and it is just the main. What else do we see in there that's unfamiliar? Well, there's this letter E. So, what's that? Well, E is actually a special number, a bit like pi is a special number. Instead of being 3.14, etc., E is 2.718, etc. So like pi, E is a number whose digits go on and on forever without any discernible pattern. <clears throat> Out of interest, what E stands for is the name of the person who came up with it. And his name was Leonard Euler. So it's spelt Euler, but it's pronounced Euler. So it's Euler's number. And that's why it's called E. So if you're interested in finding out more about Euler's number, it's um, Khan Academy's got some really good videos on that, and it's actually pretty cool. It has applications in everything from finance to astronomy, and usually is dealt with when dealing with exponential growth or decay. But that's another story. All we need to know here is that it's a number and that it exists on our calculator. Okay, what's the final confusing symbol here? Well, it's the exclamation mark, isn't it? Now, the exclamation mark actually is a symbol for something called factorial. All factorial means is it means you're going the number, so suppose the number was 3, you're going the number times everything down to 1. So 3 times 2 times 1 would be 3 factorial. 4 factorial would be 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And you get the idea. If we extend backwards, what would 2 factorial be? Well, it would just be 2 times 1. So it would just be 2, wouldn't it? And 1 factorial? Well, that's just 1. What do you think 0 factorial is? Well, it turns out <coughs> that 0 factorial is defined as being 1. So it's just a fact. It means 1. Okay, so now we've got a bit of a picture. We now know all those things are. The good news is um, the focus actually in this achievement standard is not the um, mathematics or the mechanics of these of these. Um, things I've just shown you, it's actually just plugging them into the calculator and getting a probability, which we then relate to the context. So, let's do it. So if we go back to the question we were just looking at from New Lake, and um, we're going to do question 1A using the formula. So, the goal of the question is, what is the probability in a randomly chosen hour that no one places rubbish in a bin. The information in the question is that we're told that the number of people placing rubbish in a bin on average is four per hour. Okay, so plus on distribution, our parameter is the mean. So that's this thing here, mean of four per hour, and so lambda. That's this thing here, is 4 per hour. Always say what it's per. Okay, now, using the formula, probability of zero uh, people placing rubbish in the bin. 
So our formula again looks like this. So we're just going to copy and substitute. So it's lambda to the power of x times e to the power of negative lambda all over x factorial. Substituting in. So lambda is 4. So that's going to be 4. And x is 0. So 4 to the power of 0 times and then e to the power of negative lambda. So e to the power of negative 4 divided by x factorial, so 0 factorial. Okay, so if we do this on our calculator, so now the steps we have to go through. In order to get access to the factorial button, we need to be in probability mode. To get into probability mode, we go, we're in run, then we go option, and probability mode's not on the screen, so we scroll to the right, so F6, and then prob is F3, so that's probability mode, and see there's our factorial button, so we've got that ready to rock. So, plugging the numbers in, I want to go 4 to the power of 0 times e to the power of negative 4. Now, e on our calculator is actually above the ln button. So, I'm looking for a button that looks like this. And um, it looks like it says in. It's actually ln. ln is log natural. But above that button is e to the power of x, so the secondary function. So to get there, we have to go shift. So I've gone shift, and then I go the ln button, and I get e to the power of, and it's e to the power of negative 4. Negative 4. Okay. Now, I'm going to divide all that by 0 factorial. So this is where I go zero, zero, zero and um, to get the factorial, see I'm in probability mode, so it's just F1, gives me that exclamation mark. Now, um, it's important to put brackets around our denominator, so I'm going to go bracket, zero, factorial, close bracket. It's the only place where we need brackets here. And execute, and there's my answer which is the same as if I'd looked up on my tables using lambda of 4 and x of 0. And um, here it is. So lambda is the number along the top. So there's my lambda. So I'm looking for 4.0. So lambda of 4 and then x value of 0 and see 0 0.0183. And that's the same answer as we got using the formula. Or if you want to use the graphics calculator um, and use P, PD, you can do that too. And Mr. Howard's already done some videos on that. Okay, so it's good to have a play with that formula. So what I've just showed you, there's probably enough. If you are going for mere excellence, just watch the next wee bit too. Because I'm just going to show you a little bit more about how that formula simplifies when x is 0. So only keep watching if you're feeling good about this and wanting to push yourself a bit further. Otherwise, maybe just stop and, and practice some more. Make sure you're comfortable using the formula. Okay, so for those who are interested, how this, the other thing that happens when x is 0 is this. If you look at um, this formula, what's anything to the power of 0? So look, what's 4 to the power of 0? Well, 4 to the power of 0 is 1, and anything to the power of 0 except for 0 will, will always give you an answer of 1. So when x is 0, that bit's going to cancel out to 1. The other thing is 0 factorial is defined as being 1. So 0 factorial is defined as being 1. So when x is 0, the whole formula simplifies and just ends up being e to the negative lambda. 
And um, when we get to the inverse problems, and Mr. Howard's done a video of those, um, then that simplification is really important because you have to know the probability of x being zero in order to work backwards and do an inverse problem. So watch Mr. Howard's video on um, on that one, um, and uh, you'll find out how to do that. All the best.